Hambini fans and welcome. In today's episode we have these which are the new Nipest wheels. So these ones are the Nova. Their first outing was the Maui. This is going to be a technical look. Some people call this an unboxing, other people call this a remake. The growth of gravel has seen a cataclysmic shift in the way that wheels are marketed and kind of developed and these Nipest wheels reflect that. There's less emphasis on the aero way more emphasis on the mechanical. In the scope of delivery, you'll get the wheels, some spare spokes, rim tape, a set of tubeless valves, this tool, which we'll talk about a bit later, a fairly comprehensive manual card that's in several different languages, this psychedelic green box to put everything into, and my favorite bit, which is this Nipest wheel bag, which is worth the price tag alone. Look, it's even got a spare pouch for rubbers. If you're an engineering focused YouTuber, they'll also send you some sections, which will give you a boner. Weight of the front wheel is... Six hundred and three. The weight of the back wheel is 692. External width is 30. Internal width is around about 23. And these are the 55 mil depth rims. They do come in a few different sizes. The rim design is clearly intended for modern, wider tyres, and I guess that's been driven quite a lot by gravel and tubeless to a certain extent. Uh, so it's 30mm wide on the outside and 23 on the inside. So it'll give you a better support if you are going to use a wider tyre. You really want, for aerodynamic purposes, for the tyre not to light bulb or mushroom. Um, but if you're using it on gravel, then that kind of like doesn't matter. Um, the Nova rims are tubeless compatible, so I guess that's a bit of a standard now. Uh, but it's good to see that they've taken that into consideration because there are some budget ones out there that, that aren't. You can get the rims in a few different sizes. So there's 35 deep, 45 and 55, which are the ones that I have. You can also order these in a mixed depth com combination, so the mullet kind of look. You can have a 35 front and a 55 rear, if you wish. Now, each depth is not scaled, so in, I guess, aircraft fuselages, they used to call stretches of them as scales, so they just make the fuselage a bit longer, keep the same wings. In this case, the aerofoil section is individual, dependent on which size you get. So the 35 is a lot blunter than the 55. I haven't tested the 35 aerodynamically, but I can pretty much guarantee it's no, not going to be anywhere near as fast as the 55. The 55 looks like it's got a better alpha critical angle in any case. The insides of these wheels look, wheel rims look pretty clean and you'd expect them to be, especially if they're going to send them onto a YouTube channel for a cut up. Um, the spoke holes where the nipples go are individually reinforced. So if you look at this one, there's no spoke hole, uh, nipple hole here. But if you look at this one, we've got a cut through through the spoke hole and that's been reinforced. So that's like five or six mil there, whereas it's only about two or three on the non-reinforced section, so it keeps the weight down. One thing I wanted to highlight, which is not really spoken about in their marketing material, is the rim strength. So these are rated for 120 PSI. That's before the safety factor's put in. So let's assume the safety factor is one and a half. So that'll be 180 PSI, um, and then, then there's a weight limit on that. But as the rim gets wider, the stresses on the corners where the hooks are get higher. Um, this is a hooked rim, so you, the chances of it coming off when you hit a curb are quite slim, but the thin wall pressure vessel stress that's 
caused by having such a wide rim um, is quite admirable really. 120 psi is really good, so it indicates the rim is quite strong. The Nova is cross-laced on the corresponding drive side. So for the front wheel, the braking force is going to go through the disc brake side. So the non-drive side is cross-laced and the drive side is radially laced. Cross-lacing is necessary because braking loads cannot be transmitted or sorry, accelerating loads cannot be transmitted through a radially spoked wheel. So you need that on at least one side. It's more advantageous to have it on the side nearest the braking so that the load doesn't have to go through the wheel hub. On the drive, uh, on the back wheel, the drive is actually on the same side as the cross lacing. So if you look, the braking load is on this side, but because you're going to use this for drive purposes, the drive is on the same side as the cassette, so it's cross, it's uh, the opposite of the front, so it gives you better stiffness. Both front and back wheels are two to one laced, so there's for every two spokes on the on one side, so let's call it the cross lace side, there's one spoke on the radially laced side. So in total, there's 21 spokes, that's both the front wheel and the back wheel. Key standout feature for this are the completely hidden spokes, nipples. Um, they're recessed below the edge of the rim. In order to get access to it, you need that special Von Noa tool. And that goes in like that, slides in like that, and then it allows you to hold the spoke. And that keeps it centralized and also locks it. The aero benefit from having the nipple uh, recessed is quite noticeable. You can see that in testing. The other advantage is having a longer spoke increases the amount of uh, vibration damping you can have in the wheel. So it isn't going to be quite as good as having a shallower depth in, for you know comfort, but it's about as good as you're going to get. That difference is going to be subtle but the approach kind of makes sense from a structural standpoint. These are the Von Noa spokes, carbon spokes. I think these are considered to be like the fourth generation of carbon spoke technology. I think they were developed by Stren, but if someone knows, then do let me know. The end is titanium, so it will not corrode in most instances. It's still got the flexibility in that direction, so you ideally want that, and then in this way, it's a lot stiffer, but really the strength is from the tension. You'd need a few hundred kilos to snap that. Um, each spoke is it's around 3.1 to 3.2 millimeters uh, in width, so the cord length is 3.1 to 3.2, and it's only 0.9 thick, which is extremely thin. Um, the other end, which is the nipple end has that recessed feature which is there to make it completely out of the way of the wind. This is the T head so it's not quite a rectangle it's like a rectangle with the corners rounded off and that means when you put it into the hub it will self-align and you are less likely to put any torsional force onto the spoke, so it's much more less likely to, to break from torsional fatigue. This is the Nova Hub, and a lot of, I guess, unwanted media press was raised when a few of these started, not specifically Nipest ones, but other people's, I think they were Cadex ones, where the spoke um, started to lose its tension and the corresponding end would come out of the, the hub. This doesn't have a shield around it, and to be honest, I don't think it's necessary, but other people do. The T-head slots into here. I don't know how they've machined that because it's a sort of rec semi-rectangular slot in such a restricted space. I just don't know how you'd get in there to machine it. Obviously, when it comes to intricate parts like that, I'm no expert, but it just looks like a complete pig to machine. So shout out to the guy that or girl who... Uh, did the G-codes for that. Ratchet, 
is a, is it 36 tooth? I think it's 36 tooth. Um, so if we pull this out, servicing of this is dead easy. You don't need any special tools. So three hub is aluminium and they look like 6802 bearings in there. Uh, 6, 8, the 0, 2 indicates it is 15 mil and that just slides off. Now when you pull this off, obviously I've, I've, this is a bit subjective, but it feels like it's a very good fit. I mean, I do this all the time, so to me that does feel like a very you know good fit, a good decent transition fit, there's no slack in there. 6802, it's got SEMA bearings in it. Um, I've got some mixed feelings about them, but nonetheless, they are SEMA bearings. Ceramic, and then inside there, that's the free hub. You've got the DT style ratchet. Almost every new hub going forward, I think it's gonna have this style of design. So the DT patent ran out and everyone's jumped onto the bandwagon. It's significantly cheaper to produce this. Um, both from a manufacturing and an assembly perspective. So there's the ratchet rings. You can get that with a higher teeth engagement account. I think you can get it for 54. Um, no special tooling is required to change this. So that makes life easy. And then behind there, you've got a 15267. And then the far side is also a 15267. So it's got plenty of capacity in terms of bearing load. This is the front wheel and on this side, which is the non-drive side, you've got the disc brake mount, which is a uh, center lock. It looks like a Shimano cassette free hub lock ring that goes on there. And on this side, it's the drive side. This side is radially spoke, so you've got the T-head spokes going in there. Again, this is all completely clear of any nipples or anything like that. To service this, you can just pull the plug out and behind there you've got two 15 two six seven bearings which are quite overkill or oversized for the application a lot of wheels have 6802 bearings in there um, which have a lot lower load rating so you join me in the garden where it is actually sunny for once and this is england so the bike has been pretty much faultless. That frame really is, I think, underrated because I've put some hammer through that and it hasn't had any issues whatsoever. In fact, I would say it's one of the better frames I've had. Uh, it's better than my Skylon. There we go. The custom stand that I made out of a watering can. Anyway, the, the tires and the wheels, I mean, we're here for the wheels. We had a little misdemeanor wasn't necessarily a result of the wheels as per se um, I just got a bit too frisky um, the tire to rim transition that's been fairly easy these tires are new so they were a bit tighter to get on but again they went on without really any hitches the disc brake lines up without any problems and it's the same on the back so transition is really good there's not much of a light bulb with this particular tire and these tires are new um, so yeah no issues with them at all right it is that time of the show again it is time for powerpoint the pen is quite we're messy today nipes nova tech deck was going to change one of the valves to something else, but never mind. Right, by Hambini, age five. I will try and keep this as swift as possible. First thing, remember to look me up on the website and check me out on Patreon and on Instagram and on Facebook. Vanoa spoke. So this is a normal spoke, and if it wasn't highlighted as well as it could be earlier on in the show, that is how the head looks. So it's not a perfect rectangle. I've kind of like drawn how it would, how I envisage it was originally machined. So it was a circle and then they machined the, uh, the ends off. That in itself isn't tricky, but making the mating component for that in such a confined space kind of is. All the wheel tests that I have on here now have a certificate that shows all the mechanical tests and things that were on it. You can get full access to it on Patreon. 
Uh, going through these just briefly, there was nothing really that stood out as being exceptionally bad. Uh, the bearings were a little bit tight, but that was it. Um, I mean, you could change them if you wanted to further down the line. Uh, and the aero performance was kind of like bang on for a wheel set of this size. Onto the Nepest website, you can get the wheels in a variety of depth combinations. So you can get 35 35, so if you want the lightweight, or 55 55, which is probably the one I would go for. Um, the, the main reason is it, when you get to sort of 35 to 55, the difference in the crosswind stability is not that great unless it's really, really windy. And if you live in northern England, it probably is really windy, but generally only in summer. This is a sort of view of the sections that they have. Um, you can see they're not scaled or stretches. And then this is not really highlighted so well in their literature, but the wheel will take 120 PSI, which for a wheel that is quite wide is quite quite impressive because a lot of them have a 100 psi limit or less than that and that's just the recommended you could probably go higher than that and this is the rest of the blurb if you've got any questions or comments whack them in the box below i do read them all i might not reply to them all but i do read them all uh, and then also check me out on these other bits of social media now thanks very much and until next time keep banging your hairdresser